So, Robert, first and foremost, how do you feel about the victory? Um, I'm absolutely stoked. It was, uh, it was a tough fight, and um, I think it was, a, it, was, it was a great debut into this sport um, against a wrestler, and uh, yeah, I couldn't be more happy. And especially since it was a tough winner against a tough winner, does that make you feel uh, any better about the Smashes guys, that you guys are top dogs? Um, I think it's, uh, that's a two-part answer. It's just I'm absolutely elated that you know, there's one winner, and <laughs> there can only be one. But no, that was um, that was def definitely a highlight. But uh, also the fact that he was a, a purebred wrestler, and then that's how he, he won his matches. He harassed people with the wrestling, and um, yeah. Can we just talk about your fighting style? That arm hanging down low and the one arm cocked and ready to go. It makes people nervous. Made me nervous. <laughs> it made me nervous, to be honest. Does it? Yeah, it was, uh, it was all part of a strategy because um, I think everyone who's seen Colton Smith fight knows that he goes for that single and he goes for that wrestle. And um, having that left hand on my leg ensures that if I'm caught unawares for that for that double leg or single leg, I've got an underhook instantly. Plus, it's it's daunting <laughs> trying to look here and here. <laughs> but um, yeah, I definitely had to. It, it was almost suicide, and I wouldn't have done it if, if I was up against you know a purebred striker. But uh, it, was, it was a strategy um, for us, for Trisa, and, and my coach agreed with, and uh, it, it, it did its job well. And you also landed a lot of strikes while you were backing up. Is that something that you particularly drilled, or something? Because it seemed like you were very effective even when moving backwards. Definitely. Um, I, I, I researched um, his fights. I saw his fights, and I saw how he fights. He, he runs forward with the flurry to try and pressure people up against the cage and wrestle. And um, I, I, I'm a distance fighter. If you see me fight, I, I like ducking in and out, in and out. And um, not going forward too much ensured that he couldn't duck under my hits. And going back, I was just picking him apart. It also seems that um, you were talking about your hand, keeping your hand low. It also seems during that fight that Colton was kind of out of his element. He struck much more than I think a lot of people thought. Was that kind of playing in your brain? Like, uh, was that a little unexpected when you were in that? Um, definitely not. I knew that... Uh, it, once the, the, the takedown was stopped the first few times and the fact that I wasn't going straight back and getting pressured up against the cage, I was circling out and keeping him distance. And um, as well as when he came in, then for a few times I, I hit him and he started to respect, um, respect the power and he, he was hesitant. And then he's, he's, I, I enforced my will on him and I think he wasn't used to that. He's used to enforcing himself on other people and harassing and yeah, it just... It worked well. Talk about the stoppage a little bit. It looked like he was, uh, did, I don't know if he said anything to you after. He looked like he was a little initially upset, and then he wobbled over to you, and I don't know what was said. Um, were you, what were your thoughts on the stoppage? Was it clean, not clean? Um, I um, Personally, I, I, I hit him a few. I, I rocked him multiple times throughout that fight, and I uh, I was doing a lot of damage. And um, I think if the ref didn't stop it, it could have got real dangerous because um, I'm not the one to type of stop. He did catch you in the at the end of the first round, though. What was going through your mind when you went down? You recovered pretty quickly. Um, keeping my left hand glued to my leg was it's kind of a suicide tactic. <laughs> uh, I was always I was always kind of um, wary of that overhand, but I, I don't think I gave it the respect it deserved until I got hit with it. Um, it didn't so much rattle me as just kind of shock me, took me off balance a bit. Um, but uh, definitely going into that second, I was like, okay, it's there. I know it's there now. I know it's range, and I know it's power. To be honest, and that's not blackout power, but. I'd, I'd rather not get hit. <laughs> this is your first time in Las Vegas, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. Do you have any special plans now that you've won to enjoy the city? Um, this is the city of eating, and uh, <laughs> I'm going to go absolutely ballistic. <laughs> well, the good thing is, is you probably know Ray Seppo, who will be a great guide for you. I've seen pictures of him this week with Mark Hunt. I know James Tahuna is here as well. All you guys from coming from down under. Has that made the week any more enjoyable for you to have sort of, you know, your countrymen here with you? Um, definitely. Um, the fact that I have countrymen in, in the same car just enforces that we have a, a whole country behind us. And that's, that's a huge support. Um, when, when I was out there in the cage, I knew that there are a lot of uh, like my, my countrymen watching me back, back at home and just gluing themselves to that screen and couldn't be more happy to, to, to try and make them proud and make, make Australia proud. Now, when I was in Australia with you in December, we were talking about the gyms there. There's not a lot of unity in the gyms, a lot of competition. <clears throat> and I think I remember you saying something that if you were able to win, you wanted to kind of change the mentality and sort of, sort of help things down, down there with, with fighters and with, you know, kind of unifying more. Has that changed at all? Were, were you able to make any strides in that direction? 
Um, definitely. I, I, um, I started going out and, and pulling fighters from other gyms and going to other gyms to try and just build a connection of that. Let's help each other to try and take it against the world. But um, it, it, yeah, it's just it's a slow process. People people don't like new ideas, and um, you, you can you can tell by our government at the moment it's it's really reluctant to try and get into the MMA scene, Victoria especially. Um, but I think if, if we all band together and just just show them that this is this is a sport for athletes and it deserves to be respected and, and give it the proper funding and proper respect it deserves then um yeah i think we'll all get have a have a higher standard of the sport ourselves can you tell me about your shirt here it's uh obviously made special for this fight here it's got the reaper on that that's your nickname yeah, yeah that, that's uh that's the fight name i i um i decided on the reaper uh, no, uh why is that how did you come to that decision to have that as your nickname uh well it was, it was a long process of <laughs> uh, i'm very picky but um People, people know that I like finishing fights. I like ending people. I like ending. I don't like leaving it to the refs. And um, I thought death was a, you know, a good way of getting that out there. <laughs> so laughing at me. No. <laughs> I should have thought of something else. <laughs> I like the Reaper. Thank your sponsors. I, uh, I'd like to give a big shout out to Fear the Fighter, Booster Fight Gear, and BSC um, Supplements Australia, as well as MMA Apparel. Um, and all the fans in Australia, without you guys and TriStar, PMA, it wouldn't, wouldn't be possible. I wouldn't be here today. Thank you so much. Congrats.